Training a graph neural network is same as training any other models in PyTorch. Uh, we would have to clean up the data set, featureize the data set, split the data set, create the data loader, the model, loss, epochs, and training batches. The only thing that changes in this case is the featureizer. Instead of using the uh, the fingerprints or the molecular descriptors, here we are going to use the graphs for uh, featureizing the data and the rest of it is the same. We'll uh, use PyTorch again in this case to train our models. First, let's go, go ahead and install uh, all these packages. And once everything is installed, you should be able to see uh, uh, a node that it's installed. As before, we are going to use the QM9 dataset and the Homo Lumo gap for prediction. Let's uh, download the dataset and use smiles and gap uh, for prediction and we are going to use a small fraction of this data set because we want to save time because this is just a demonstration and if you are interested in training the entire data set you can do so by removing the sample uh, fraction equal to 0.5 from here and that should help you train the entire model but do be aware that uh, it'll take an hour or two sometimes uh, depends on uh, the model parameters and other things, but it'll take a while for you to run the models. What we are going to do in this case for featureization of smiles is use the canonical atom featureizer from the deep graph library, and that's what we are going to use for uh, even training uh, the model. And uh, we'll use the canonical atom featureizer that will give us the node features or the atom features, and then we are going to have a bond featureizer that will give us all bond features. The process is very much streamlined. You need not write code for getting all those features. But if you want to make changes, you can do so. And more details on uh, on these featureizers can be found on the documentation. And you can click on, on this link to get, get to the documentation. So for doing uh, featureization, uh, we'll import the features from the DGL life uh, science library and uh, we also need the RD kit because RD kit is what is going to convert the smiles representation and get all the uh, features for us. So we have the uh, atom featureizer object and bond featureizer object. We are going to have, we, we need a, a field uh, label for for the featureizer and we are going to call it HV. Uh, hidden uh, verti hinder vertices or hidden edges kind of thing. You can name it anything, but here we say HV for vertices and HE for edges, just for just for us to know what the features are. And let's create this featureizer. And once we have created the featureizer, we can apply it to the entire data set. But before doing so, let's look on one molecule to see how the featureizer works. So there's also this need of uh, mold to graph object, and that is what is going to convert uh, smiles to molecule, and then we can pass in the node featureizer and bond featureizer to actually get the graph out of uh, smiles. Here we are going to use ethane, and ethane converted to a molecule, then to a graph, and let's see what the graph looks like. So. Here is the graph representation. You won't actually see a drawing of the uh, ethane molecule, but we can do that too. But uh, what, what we are interested in is looking at the number of nodes. We have two atoms. So two atoms is uh, two, uh, two nodes. And this is a bi bi-directional graph. So you'll be having uh, edges in both directions from C to C in one direction and C to C in the other direction. Those are two different edges. So uh, this this by graph creates like two edges, uh, twice the number of edges you have. So that's the reason we have two edges in here. And n data is the node data, e data is the edge data. And we see that this is a dictionary with hv because we called the atom label to be hv. So this is a dictionary. And when we call hv, we would get uh, this uh, feature for nodes and we see that it's of length 74. You can see more why it's 74 
uh, features because it, it contains all of these one hot encoding for atom type, degree, number of hydrogens. You can see more of that on, in, the, in this documentation. So is the edge data. So we have 12 dimensional uh, feature for edges. So <clears throat> it looks good. Let's uh, let's do this for the entire data set now. And this is just a helper function, which again uses a molecule, returns a graph, so that we can apply the entire uh, function on, on the data set. Because this is a small data set, this should be quick. But if you are using the entire data set, it could take up to five, maybe six, seven minutes to do, to this operation. But just be patient if you are using the entire data set. Once we have uh, the graph created, let's split the data. We can use any other sp uh, splitters, but uh, as before, it's easy to use pandas data frame and just split it with uh, the fastml. And uh, that's the reason we are using fastml to split it. And we'll use the graph uh, as input and gap as output. So I just used a subset of the original data set, excluding the smiles. And let's look at the data again. So it, wo it looks like it's working good. We have graph, graph, graph as the input of graph for the te X test. And this looks pretty much uh, ready to go for training. As before, we would need, sorry, as before, we would need the data loader to load all of these, uh, all, all of these graphs into a batch and then do the processing. Uh, as before, we would have X and Y's, but remember X for us is now graphs, a bunch of graphs, a batch of graphs, and then Y is the target homo value. So uh, we can uh, do batching with, for graphs with uh, the DGL function, DGL.batch, batches the graph and then we can do the stacking for the other values because these are just uh, scalar values for y and so it's just homo value and we can stack them there's no need of stacking the batches because uh, there is a way to do the batch uh, with the dgl that's the reason we just use the dgl.batch to batch the graphs instead of using torch.stack and this function, if you remember, just is a way of converting a single entry into a batched uh, uh, entry. So batch x is uh, x is batched graph, y is batched values of y. Let's run this code. And uh, this is the collate function. And this is where we are going to uh, actually create the data loader. Uh, same as before, we have x values, which are just the list of graphs. There's no need of uh, the DT type and other things in this case because it's a graph and you have the Y values here. In this, again, you need the float value because you need to make sure that the output is predicted to be in, in the same uh, data type. We use uh, 64. You can change it if you need uh, for batch size, but 64 looks uh, decent for this type of job. And let's look at the data set again. The first uh, entry of the data loader, we have nine edges, nine nodes, and 18 edges. And this looks fine with some, these are the Y values for us, and this is the X value. And this looks pretty reasonable to go into uh, training, um, training the graph neural network. We'll do the same thing for the valid and the test loader. Coming to the uh, model now. We'll use the MPNN. MPNN is a message passing neural network uh, from the DGL life science package. You can find the other available models over here and uh, you can just replace the model of MPNN with any of the models over there and do the prediction if you want to. And uh, it, the model needs node in features, node input features and edge input features. Remember that the node input features as we saw above is 74 and edges is 12. And that's why we put in seven and 12. 
and the other numbers that you see over here are the default values for this function so if you just scroll over it you'll see that node and edge features are the ones that we want and others are almost their default values i'm just using the default values here you can even change it if you want end task is uh, the number of tasks the prediction task here we are just predicting the homo lumo value that's why we have one if you are predicting multiple values you can change this to two three depending on how many uh, values you are predicting and this is the target values and uh, by number of target values i mean the different types of uh, target values like homo you are predicting homo you are predicting lumo you are predicting gap you are predicting uh, the energy and so on and so forth so let's see what this model looks like uh, we have a gnn layer and uh, a weed out layer and a predict part if you if you remember from from the lesson a gnn is a graph neural network part from here so this is taking the the graph and converting it into a transformed graph and the readout is what converts that transformed graph into a set of vector for this prediction layer and uh, uh, we have uh, the prediction going on over here we have a linear layer followed by a value and then again a linear and you can see all of these layers what they look like and uh, this is what's going on so this is edge edge function that's going on here and this is node operations and edge operations and then something over here and this looks good we have the model ready everything is okay and let's start uh, training but we need a loss function we use uh, mean absolute uh, ever loss function the reduce is equal to none is to sp state that uh, whether the loss has to be averaged or not by default it averages the loss for you so if you have a batch of uh, predictions it will automatically give you the mean but sometimes it's good to just not do that and we do it ourselves and that's why we would see in the uh, in the code below over here we are using that dot mean function so we are just taking pairwise differences and then taking a mean in this case so that's the reason we use reduce equal to none I and mean, you you could see the documentation if you click on this and by default it's mean and uh, some documentation of what's done over here so we'll do we'll use that loss function optimizer again adam optimizer and you can see what all functions there are there are all of these uh, parameters we are using learning rate of 0 0.001 and uh, that seems good enough we'll just start it the model training is a standard uh, procedure uh, we have number of epochs set we have the number of loops for the epochs model dot train and batch loader once we have the batch loader we get the batch the x values and y values the target values as before the thing that changes is this part over here the model over here needs uh, if you look at the model uh, the model uh, needs something called uh, batch graph so it needs all the graphs that are batched it also needs all the batch node features and also the edge features to make predictions so that's the reason from the batch graph we do end data of hv and remember the end data is like a dictionary and from there we get hv so we'll get a list of node features for all the batched graphs and we'll get a uh, we'll get the node features for edge features sorry for all the batched graphs and we pass in those features in here and that will do the prediction and rest is the uh, standard you compute the loss you do the uh, you do back propagation and you optimize the you change the weights you compute the loss again and uh, you append the loss that was computed and then average over the batch losses to get a training loss and the same goes on with the the, the validation part of it so let's start running this and see how what happens 
so it started running because there are a lot of parameters involved this slows down a little bit more than the first model that you trained but hopefully we'll be able to see some uh, results and you'll need to train it for a longer time to get uh, more accurate results and also with a lot of data in this case we are just using 5% of the data set So let this be training and I'll start the video again when uh, we have all the five box done. I've started the video now and uh, the training is completed. As you can see, it took five minutes, 39 seconds to run five box. And uh, we see some changes and other things this model will take a lot of time to train and we need a lot of data for it but we can do uh, testing as before we can just get a random sample and we know what the value is we have a graph sample now and uh, for prediction remember we need evaluation mode and then we need node features add features and the graph for model and that's what we are passing. We are passing the graph that we get from here, node features and edge features for the corresponding graph. And let's see what it predicts. 0.21 is the value and 0.23 is the prediction. It's not too bad, but it's just one sample. And uh, we can see what it does over the entire data set by using the same uh, thing that we did over the entire data set, test data set. And this again should take a little bit longer to execute uh, and uh, let's see how long it takes once it's done what we're going to do is plot the values of uh, for two values and the predicted values and we'll see what it looks like and this is the plot we see that something that was 0.2 so the x-axis is uh, the two values y-axis is the predicted values and we see that the prediction is somewhere just stuck in this range and something that's 0.15 is predicted somewhere over here 0.3 is also predicted to be 0.24 so it's not so great in predicting because again we have less data over here when we haven't trained it ex extensively we can look at uh, uh, the metrics for this and for that we can get the scikit-learn metrics or r2 score and mean absolute error let's see both of them and how they fare and uh, r square r2 score is not so good it's it should be closer to one is better and it's not so good but uh, we can see the mean absolute error in prediction is 0 0.04 and uh, that's that, that there could be some improvement we could train it for longer so that we improve all of this course and you can see that this is not just a hypothetical hypothetical model that we implemented people have actually run this on the qm9 data set and you can see the values that they get using the same model but trained longer on the entire data set in this article over here and uh, this is the end of this lesson i hope you uh, enjoyed uh, training a graph neural network and I hope to see you in the next lesson.